Great. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is um, June 30th, Thursday, June 30th, last day of June, 2022. Rosh Chodesh Aleph Tammuz Hatafshin Peibet. And um, I'm Riva Muna. We're, uh, it, it is Parashat um, Chukat, but we're mostly going to be focusing on um, the energies of Tammuz today and um we'll see you know how Hashem unfolds the flow because um there's just there's so much to share and um I there's so many beautiful texts but there's so many beautiful concepts and ideas so Bizarre Hashem Hashem will guide and direct me um I'm giving it over so Chodesh Tov everybody so um, I, what I'm going to do, I think, is um, very, very quickly just um, give you the basic map and not unpack it at all, because I really want to actually do something else. Um, I want to right, but I want you to have the map if you would like to explore more yourself throughout the month. OK, but um, I really like don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I just want you guys to have, um, you know, the the basic overall map. We we've done it the last two years, so some of you should even have the map already. But for those of you who don't, I just want to give you really quick the basic map, um, and then and then build something else. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so very very basic um, map of Tammuz, um, the. The permutation of the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. Good morning, honey. Um, is Hey Vav Hey Yud? Right. Um, <clears throat> which you'll just hear is right in, in terms of the four weeks of the month: feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine. Which is going to have a lot to do with what we're doing in this month. But again, sorry, not going there right now. <laughs> um, the <clears throat> the month was formed by the letter Chet, but you can already, again, just play with and hear, um, right? Chet is, has the double energy of being Chet as in Chupa, right? As being the joining of the masculine and feminine. Chet as being the doorway, right? Whenever we have a Chet, uh, a doorway, it looks like the shape of the letter Chet, right? Um, <clears throat> but chet also literally sounds like the word chet. So um, something that we notice that none of the shvatim have a letter chet or a letter tet in their names. Again, I'm so sorry. I'm actually not going to unpack any of this right now. They don't have those letters in their names. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, it is a um, water sign. Cancer in English and Sautan in Hebrew. Um, the energetic sphira connected to this month is Gvura, mm -hmm. which again, not going to unpack right now, that will show up in Zahav, right? The Egel has Zahav. Zahav is, um, is Gvura, right? Any kind of Gvura means to limit or constrict or block flow, but it also has a double qual um, quality, which we're going to talk about, that it also can contain flow and direct flow and hold flow, right? So where is our friend also? <clears throat> the, the Shevet is Reuven. And the Mekubalim um, teach, right, the meaning of the name Reuven has three meanings, according to the Mekubalim, right, literally Reuven, right, yeah. as in Yir Even, as see this sun, right. Um, I wanted to give you the exact, the exact Lashon. Um, so, so beautiful. Um, so here, Ra'a Be'oni, that's the first meaning the Mephoshim say, Hashem Ra'a Be'oni, 
Hashem saw my rejection. Hashem saw my suffering. Right? This is Leia, remember? This is Leia's firstborn. And he seems to be conceived from a place of pain, right? Of the, of the feminine. <clears throat> the feminine feeling unseen and unloved and un, unheld and unsupported. So the Mephorshim say one, one of the... Um, one of the meanings of his name is Hashem Ra'a Be'oni, right? Hashem saw my suffering. Oni also here is like my poverty, my impoverishment, my lowness, my diminishment. But beautifully along come other holy masters and say, it also means, it's also a permutation of Yehaveni, Yehaveni. And he will love me. Right? So it has a vision also of when this energy has a venahafuku, right, is sweetened and is turned around. And of course, the third meaning can then behold a sun. Right? So all three of those energies are going to be flowing within Ruven. A re'e, re'e ben. Right, so, so just to put that in your, the layering, right? <clears throat> the energetic layering. All of those energies are going to be held in Tammuz and we're working with all of those energies. So the energies of the roots of rejection, abandonment, suffering, but also the energetic seeds of how uh, the, a vision of it elevating and transforming. Mm -hmm. And the bridge between those two things having to do with um, sight and how we perceive things, how we see, how we're seen. And just to notice that the Ben is a name of Hashem. It's right, because it's the Gematria 52. And it's the name, it's the name of Hashem of the Svira of Malhut. It's very significant and very important, right? <clears throat> so it has something to do with a revelation of true Malhut, of Malhut Dikdusha. <clears throat> the sight, of course, uh, sorry, the sense of is sight, of course, and makes sense, right? because we're talking about the A. But to be clear, yes, it's talking about physical sight, but we're also talking about insight and inner sight. Perception and um, <clears throat> um, the um, sort of uh, let's see, felt sense, um, the Mida, we could really say, the Mida. Um, this is a system that Rav Yitzchak Ginsburg, may he have Rav Boshalema, he teaches a lot that he, he gives over a Mida in connection, like a, for example, a Met Tmimut Simcha, right? So the, it's almost like a felt sense of this month is Yira, which again has the word in it, Re'e. Right? Yira as in awe or fallen fear has again the double quality, or we could just say the whole spectrum from very, um, very earthy type of fear to yira tawamamut, right? To awe, that whole spectrum. <clears throat> and noticing again that it has to do right in there with the connection with how we see things, what we're seeing, what we're looking at, how we're looking at it, and equally how we're being seen. Right? <clears throat> we know from quantum physics, um, what you expect to find is generally what you find. But the expectations of the one doing the scene influences what is revealed. We know, and we know this to be true also on spiritual levels. Um, the planet of the month is the, is the moon. 
And you'll notice again, um, the moon in Hebrew being called the Yareach, the Levana. Um, and you're going to be seeing all of these um, connections to Yericho, to, <clears throat> right? Whenever you hear the name of Yahushua in the text, it's always a remez to the moon, as in Moshe Rabbeinu being the sun, Yahushua being the moon, Moshe Rabbeinu being the dukva or the masculine, Yahushua being the nukva or the receptive feminine. So just to take, just again, I'm trying to pace myself because this is really just literally supposed to be a, an introduction. <laughs> okay, it'll come out the way it comes out. Um, so just noticing again um, that in classical astrology, the moon will reveal a lot about um, your own feminine nature, your emotional nature, your subconscious or unconscious, and your own mother your connection to mother. We know that the moon is very deeply feminine. And, and some of the ways that we know that is the moon literally pulls on the waters. It has, right, an attractive koach hamoshech, right? That the moon pulls on the water, waters of the world. Um, but the that we also, the moon has an effect on our monthly cycle, has the, an effect on the waters in our body. Mm. Remember when it says that there was Kriyat Yam Suv, the Mephorshim talk about that there was an opening and a splitting in all bodies of water. But what we don't talk about is that means even the water within us, mm -hmm. right? Creating new pathways and energetic openings, even within the waters within us. Um, so the moon has also a, a deep quality of revealing the depths, right? Whereas the sun reveals, right? It reveals and with lightness, the moon reveals that which is hidden in the night and the mystery and the subconscious. In, in the feminine, in the back, we call it the back or the shadow. Okay, so far so good. Um, okay, um, it's really incredible because, uh, because of Mindy Rindanao, who studied crystals um, and gemstones and this is blowing my mind because it's the first year that this new piece of information is actually relevant to me because I've had these maps for many years and I've looked up things and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's interesting. So I, I had a few sessions with her and I was working on some, um, you know, energetic healings in my own tree of life. And I had Googled, what is the gemstone to deal with rejection and abandonment. And sure enough, we came up with something called Carnelian. And I went to the Happy Cloud, our local hippie store, and I bought two beautiful Carnelian stones. And sure enough, that is the gemstone of Tammuz. So that is so significant because this whole month is dealing with what do we do when we are met with the experience, the energetic experiences of rejection and abandonment. And I was shocked to find out that the stone of the tribe of Ruvain and his whole healing is how to move from rejection, abandonment to a state of wholeness, which we'll talk about more because again, this is only supposed to be an introduction, but is this stone? So it blew my mind. Um, yeah, okay, so I don't I have no idea. In English, it's called carnelian. It's a sort of orangey red, re orangey red brown. I bought two and I've been working with them. And then I was like, what? <laughs> there it is. Um, mm -hmm. 
Carnelian, C A R N E C A R N E L I A N. Mindy taught me a little trick, which I'm not sure if I should say on the recording, but I will. And she taught me a little trick to, um, let's just say, shall we say, tuck them into intimate places. <laughs> so you have the energies working on you and with you throughout the day. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, yeah, <laughs> Okay, so um, um, in classic astrology, but which is always going to mirror and parallel our encampment in the Midbar, there's no stila or contradiction. Right, so in the way that we camped in the Midbao, um, and the way that an astrological chart looks, it's exactly the same thing. So Ruvain or Tammuz or Cancer, the fourth house, is located in the bottom quadrant of the circle. And in the Midbao, that was, they were in the south. You understand what I mean by that? We have a circle, and we cut kind of, we cut it into four pizza slices, then we actually have four quadrants, right? The top of the circle, the bottom of the circle, the right and the left. So Cancer or the fourth house is the bottom of the chart, the lowest part of the chart, the bottom of the circle. Well, again, like if we had a circle and we put four lines, mm -hmm. so we have within the circle, so the southern part. The exactly, okay. So, Again, in classic astrology, which is the same thing, right? Um, the fourth house has to do with home, your place in the world, your roots, mother, <laughs> shocking, right? It's all the same thing, where you came from. So it will also show in your chart, your grandparents and even your great grandparents, because it's your root system. It's, it's, um, you, it's the genealogy of where you came from, energetically, spiritually, the patterns in your family, um, <clears throat> right? And, it, and your history, the conditions, the energetic feeling and conditions in your home. Um, and um, understand that when we talk about the Do Hamid Baal, realize that what, what it, as soon as we got out of Mitzrayim, like we, we, so we were born on Shri Yishol Pesach, right? So if we're going around an astrological chart, which we are, right? Nisan is the first house. That's when we were born, right? ER is the second house, right? And that's when we went through the first 40 days and our preparation for Har Sinai and receiving, right, our first revelation, because understand the second house has to do with what you receive, right? So we got, we prepared for to receive our first experience and impression of light, of Shefa, right? Third house was um, Sivan. And again, that actually does rule partnering and communication and siblings and neighbors and short journeys, sorry, to were exactly lined up with the Torah, right? So fourth, so if we're saying fourth house is in when we're in the Midbar, and it's when we get to Tammuz, so understand that what is being created here is the root system of the entire arm, right? Of home, of what home is, of where we come from, um, of history and specifically connection with the mother. So the feminine, and we're gonna talk about that a lot more because again, this is supposed to be a map. <laughs> okay. Interestingly enough, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll also notice, well, well, one thing we'll just say again, that cancer has this energy of, um, sensitivity, right? Cancerians are known as the most sensitive of all the signs, even Cancerians, right? Um, right? Even more, there's three water signs, right? Scorpio and Pisces and Cancer. And they're all extremely sensitive in different ways. What we mean is very sensitive to energy, very sensitive 
um, to changes in energy. And they're all very sensitive, but the cancers are the most sensitive and have the most neti'a or propensity to victim consciousness. Oh. Right, so it's really the elevation and the healing and the turnaround of victim consciousness, right? <clears throat> What was the third um, water sign? Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. I would say that the toughest of all the water signs, obviously, is Scorpio, right? Um, I don't want to get into a talk about Scorpio and, and Pisces right now <laughs> for a million reasons. Um, but okay. So um, you can hear right away so many hints, right? We have the, we have the gemstone on the Orion Batumin that heals rejection and abandonment. We have his name has the energetic coding for the wounding and for the healing, right? <clears throat> and, um, and you're gonna see that Ruvain, his wound happens very deeply connected to the feminine, to his, to the mother energy, to write to the story of the Dudaim, right? And several different mother figures in his life, Leah, but you remember Bilha is in another sense also a mother figure. Yeah. Is also a mother figure. It's not his mother, but it's one of the mothers in his life. Right? He essentially has four mothers in his life. He has a birth mother and three stepmothers. Do, do you think they interacted with all the children in such a way that they really did all parents all of the kids? I never got that. I never got There's that. definitely a woman's tent. But yeah, absolutely. There's a woman's tent. And the, the way that they're interacting with each other is as siblings. So there's... There's also wounding between the mothers. But that, what you're saying, would be related to any of them. Why would them in particular? Because of the actions of the Judaim and the story of the Judaim. He was an adult by then. Well, not an adult, but he wasn't seven. You're not affected seven. still by your mother? I am. That's exactly what we're talking about. Oh, that's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter how old he was. The point was okay. hit the energetic patternings around how he was conceived, how the energies in the womb, how his relationship with his mother, the feminine. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll explore more in a moment. Um, so again, we're just... Um, if you, if you doubt at all his relationship with his mother, his name means see my son. <laughs> That's a pretty big hint. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but that's his name. That's his part of his whole shlichut, right? Um, so just to write Mark in your maps, right? His story with the Judaim, which, which really is this, deeply connected, right, with both of his mothers, Rachel and Leah, although, right, his birth mother, Leah. <clears throat> um, we'll say more, right, but, and Bilha, <clears throat> the story of Bilha, and again, for those of you who don't know, right, in the Forshim have a, a, there's a deep discussion around, um, well, again, I guess we'll put it on for the recording because many people don't know the story. So Yaakov had his tent, his bed, sorry, in Rachel's tent. And after Rachel passed, the assumption was that he would move his bed into Leah's tent as she was the other full wife. But instead, he moved his bed into Bilha's tent. And Bilha, of course, was the maid servant to Rachel. But understanding, by the way, they're all sisters, right? Is that clear? They're all sisters with this from the same father, but from different mothers. They're all, all four of them are sisters. I think Bella and Wilco were the concubines of um, Love. Right? Love, yeah. right. But they're all, but they're yeah, all sisters, sisters, right? Different mothers. The same, the same 
the same father and different mothers, right? So um, Ruvain was extremely wounded by that. And again, that it's really hitting that nerve of what is my place? What is my mother's place? What is my roots? Where do I belong, right? And the, the sense that I've been usurped from my place, my mother's been usurped from her place. And he takes action and the action is unclear. Some before she can say that he physically took his father's bed and moved it back into his mother Leia's tent. And some before she can say that's a remez or a hint, a delicate hint to say that he had sexual relations with Bilhah. Now, if that's true, then we can understand Yaakov's response at the time of right Prashat Vayichi um, and giving out the brachas and and his response to Ruvain, which we'll get into. Please, God. Is that clear though so far? Was she the youngest sister? No, Zilpa was the Zilpa. youngest. Okay. okay. Well, again, I didn't make it up. <laughs> um, thank God. But the Makubalim do many of them teach that that is actually what happened. Right. So it's not adultery for a few reasons. Again, I guess if we just want to address that for a second, I don't really, but I'll quickly address it. Number one, the Torah was not yet given. And that's something that we use as an excuse when it serves us. <laughs> so here we go, <laughs> right? Um, right. Um, number two, she didn't have the quality of a wife. She was a Pelegesh, which has different halachic um, boundaries around it. Remember that some of them married their sisters. Uh, yeah, Rachel and Leah were sisters. So if we're gonna go down that route, that's when we go to the oh the Torah wasn't given yet thing. It was his aunt. It, it was his aunt also, but um, Yochavid was Amram's aunt as well. Moshe Rabbeinu's parents. Well, back then, everyone just married everybody. Right. We're not talking about marriage. We're talking about Bikur saying he slept with one of his stepmothers. Is what I think I heard. Mm -hmm. So the question was, how was that not adultery? But how was it? We answered it. I don't know. I thought that they were religious, that eventually, like, he married them and gave them the rights of some life. No? Elu ve elu. Meaning, there's more question that say this, and then there's more question that say that. But I'm saying, if we want to defend. So that's it. We could use that as a defense if we want to be a sunny gore. Okay, so the, the the physical sign of the month is the crab. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Oh, thank you. Um, we said again that they're camped in the south. And just to notice again, mm -hmm. and I think this is um, really important. Um, this is something I've been trying to add in the last year when I remember is whenever we're teaching a Chodesh, let's understand that it's a half, it's a polarity in one energy. So when we're learning and we're going around the wheel, right, both the encampment in the Midbar and the astrological maps, understand that they're always partners of energies that are pulled to the polarities, right? And that the middle of the camp, which is the camp of the Shlina, the Aron, is the peace path, is the third path that allows for the synthesis and the balancing of the two polarities of that energy. So what I mean by that is Cancer is the fourth house, Capricorn is the 10th house, and they're going to be energetically the two polarities of one issue, one energy. Capricorn? Yeah. Okay. Right? So that like, so in the encampment, so we might have Ruvain as the Shevet of Tammuz and Dan as the Shevet of Tevet. Mm -hmm. 
right? And the two of them, right? So it's the south and the north, and it's the fourth house and the 10th house. And it's the, the hottest time of the year and the coldest time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. Cancer is like peak summer. And um, Tevet is peak winter. Yeah, mm -hmm. clear, mm -hmm. right? So they're polarities, obviously. <clears throat> I'm not gonna get into that too much right now, but again. Yes. But on that chart, yes. you have the form of the circle. With, so the fourth is down below, the 10th of the top right up there. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. So the, the fourth house is a very inward house. It, it's connected to the root system to where you came from, to, the, to your place, your physical, actual home, right? Remember, it's such a concern for cancers, here you have a cute little thing, that number one, if you want a little sign of Ruvain schlepping the bed, right? Schlepping his father's bed, you get the crab. Mm -hmm. they, and they literally carry the bed around, they carry their home around oh, with wow. them. It's such a need for security and safety that they carry their bed and carry their home with them everywhere because there's such a feel, fear of not feeling at home in the world. But again, the wounding is going to be is going to be the remedy, right? That's actually going to be become their greatest strength of making home within themselves so that they can always feel at home. You understand instead of looking for it all the time on the outside they're actually the healing is going to become learning to find refuge with hashem inside self do you see that in Ruben? Do you see that in Ruben? oh like, yes you're gonna see and that that's why i'm like please let's just get through the map so i can <laughs> yes yes yeah, isn't that it's so beautiful right okay so um some of their great greatest quality Oh, so the Arizal says that it's the right eye of, in Tammuz and the left eye in Av, even though, again, in Av, physically, the, the Tammuz is fixing the right eye. This is according to the Arizal, and Av is fixing the left eye. But remember, we're also going to have in Av fixing um, hearing because if the tribe is Shimon as in Shema. Okay, but we'll wait till we get there. Okay, so um, let's say some of the traits, okay, of this energy, vulnerable, sensitive, caring. I'm going to go a little fast. So if you need me to stop or repeat, let me know. Nurturing, compassionate, flexible, intuitive, perceptive. Patient, um, homemakers, right? They're excellent at being homemakers, at nurturing others, um, depending on their family. Okay, and so that's that's really the homeopathic healing of the month, right? The the homeopathic wounding of the month is victimhood. Absolutely. Rash and impulsive. And you're going to see these are all qualities of Ruvay, all of them. Okay. Hasty. Hasty. This is our little um, comic relief that we have. You're welcome to just take a few breaths. Um, this month, when you go into this month, that people will be experienced, everybody will be experienced these emotions more. It or, means these are the energies of that are present more, mm -hmm. and the way they affect your energy system and your stories and your belief. It's always like, and it it's always happening in the micro and in the macro, in both. Okay. Yeah. So if it's not, if this noise isn't bothering people, then we'll just, we'll just keep going. <clears throat> okay. Um, so in, in extreme states, I don't know, maybe I'm 
maybe you're going to get to it, but um, how does this also, since we're talking a lot about Obed, but could it be that Yosef had Zadik since Yes, we're going to get there. Okay. Thank you. Good. Yes, yes, they're, they're absolutely connected. Is this his work site? Or his, his birthday or something? Yosef. Yeah, today. Today. Oh, it's today? Mm -hmm. Wow, I did not know, not know that. Wow, it's deeply connected. So thank you for bringing that up because no. they are deeply connected. His, his, his healing, Ruvain's transformation happens. Um, well, I'm really getting ahead of myself, but, but Ruvain's transformation happens when through Yosef. So it's so interesting that they that he was born to fix the rectification. Yeah, and also, I mean, okay, fine, I'll go down that road for <laughs> for literally one minute because then I, I I there's so I have a very specific map that I want to give over because I feel like it's so so useful for people. So understand that if the story with Bilha is true then Ruvain is dealing with sexual wounding and Yosef is dealing with sexual holding and fixing. That's one of their connections, right? And understanding that when all the brothers wanted to kill Yosef, right? If you understand that, except Benjamin, obviously, right? <clears throat> the only one who didn't want to kill him was Ruvain. And Ruvain is the one that's to that suggested that they just throw him into the bowl, into the pit. But he never had the intention of leaving him there, right? The idea was to delay and come back and take him out of the pit. And I just read, and I, again, I have all these beautiful teachings on Ruvain that I really wanna give you over, that he actually didn't even know, um, he didn't know that uh, Yosef had been sold until yeah. The, until no, until the revelation in the time, Reuben himself didn't know because he left, and he was going to come back and take him out of the pit. And then they said he was attacked by he was killed. And he this is a, a medrash, obviously, but it's a medrash that I just learned mm -hmm. that that he didn't know the truth. One second, um, for the elevation mm -hmm. and the continued strength of um, for Yosef ben Rachel ve Yaakov, Nishmato Yale Eden, may the, the Koach of the Tzaddik Yisod Olam, and the Koach of, of elevated and healed and whole sexual intimacy that's um, remember that he Yisod comes between Tif Eret and Mahut. So it's the channel that connects the heart to physical intimacy and to nourishing the feminine. Um, sorry, I do not want this to become a class on this. Okay. Stop trying to control everything, Riva. Flow into Tammuz. Oh, that's the whole class, bye. <laughs> I just got it, okay. Yosef and Yaakov get separated from, for 22 years. If we understand that energetically of Yosef being right, rectified uh, physical and sexual intimacy, but also Yosef also has to do with um, um, Shefa in general, right? All types of nourishment, food. So it's money and food and sex, right? That's Yosef. And creativity, All right? So understand that those energies got disconnected from the emotional body, from the heart. So they became two separate things, money and eating and sexual intimacy disconnected from the heart center. That happened for 22 years. And when they come back together, remember that Yaakov declares what? The Shema. Right, that the things that now now there's a possibility for Geula to begin, and to be clear, Yeridat Mitzrayim was the beginning of Geula, right? In the whole story, in the whole picture. Okay, so um, 
May we all be zuche to tikkun habrit b'shlemus. What that means is, right, relationships that are um, conscious, that are mindful, that are compassionate, that are balanced, that are true, that are beautiful, that are truly nurturing for both parties. Uh, that reveal the best in both sides, re reveal the darkness in both sides in order for it to be elevated and held in compassion. And um, may we have already had the revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef and be ready or not, here we come <laughs> for the full, revela full revelation of Gaula within and without on the level of the individual and the level of the co collective. May we all be able to be in alignment and not step out of our true alignment uh, like Yosef Tzadik. He had an incredible root system in, in cloud. We're talking about the Torah says that Rachel and Yaakov was the mo most whole full zivug it's the zivug of tif eret and malchut it's the zivug of the heart center and the ability to receive from the heart center the giving from the heart center and the ability to receive from the heart center that's the zivug of Yaakov and Rachel right and obviously what comes out of that type of energetic connection is rectified sword. Okay, so um, let's just say a little bit more in terms of some of the challenges, right? Strangely enough, because they're so sensitive, they can be extremely insensitive. Cancer, right, can be extremely insensitive. How does that work? Because they're so sensitive, um, it's like the crab with the hard shell on it, right? Um, they can be very irrational because they, they hear and perceive everything as a personal attack. Um, they can be extremely, they are extremely fear-based. And, um, and they're big worriers, right? And um, there could be like a very deep, Again, I don't like these terms because they sound critical, but for the lack of better term to give over the energy, right? There can be an, an energy of deep neediness. Thomas. Uh, I have never experienced this with cancers, even though I know like more, I've never experienced this with all my cancer clients. I can identify with people. I can't say rising. Oh, yeah. In our rising, I mean, again, I don't want to do a class in astrology right now, that our rising is actually, according to most astrologers, and I definitely see this in myself, our rising is actually what we're growing into. It's almost like our future Gilgal, but we're right into the into our rectified rising sign. That's the direction of growth, right? Not the shadow of our rising, but again, we'll deal with that for sure. Okay, so, but you're going to hear that all of those energetic qualities are going to be present in what Tammuz was supposed to be and then what actually happened in Tammuz and then the rectification of that. Um, so in Kabbalah, it's also connected deeply to the right hand. Um, it is a cardinal sign. So just to notice for yourselves, we've only, we're only in the fourth house since Pesach, right? So um, Aries or Nisan was a fire sign. So we were learning for the first time in our new little lives to deal with the qualities and the element of the element of fire, right? And then in ER, again, we're learning for the first time 
to have a physical body, to deal with the quality of earth. Earthiness is always about how we receive things, right? Um, and then Sivan is an air sign. We're dealing with air in terms of communication, right? And space, what does that feel like to like exist in space? And now is our first encounter with water. So you'll also notice that there's three of each sign, right? I guess this class is going to be what it needs to be. <laughs> um, um, and, and, and they mature. So the youngest water is cancer, right? And then the next water is Scorpio, and the third water is Pisces, right? So you also have like the youngest fire um, is Aries, and the next fire is Leo, and the next fire is Sagittarius, for example. Okay. So we said um, it's the moon. So we're going to be, because this, the moon is the planet that rules this sign, we're going to be deeply looking at the moon's roots. And the moon's roots, of course, will take us back to the first Midrash about right, the moon opening her mouth, finding her voice and saying, right, how do we do this partnership? How can we, how can we really partner in the world? That was really her question, right? What's the secret of full, resonant, deep partnering when each one is both in their full power? Is that really possible, right? How do we do this duality thing, this polarity thing without one consuming the other or one diminishing the other? Right, and then of course, then we're also going to be putting into the mix the idea that um, Hashem, um, Hashem, right, the three things, we've said this many times, the three things that Hashem, Hashem self does tshuva for every single day. And they're, they're all going to be um, happening within the next six weeks, right? These are the three main things that it says Hashem has chalata, Hashem regrets and does tshuva for every single day. So one is diminishing the moon, the pagam la levana. Two is creating the Bain HaMitzalim, the, the three weeks, right? But it's not just the three weeks. Understand it's a deep energetic map of why does transition have to be so painful, right? Why does transition have to squeeze so deeply and push us into such diminishment that we basically have to die into into the experience. Yeah, it's but it but it but it's whatever whenever we're birthing, there's that experience. And number three is destroying the Beitamik dash. So then so much so that it says that Every Rosh Chodesh, Hashem asks us to bring a korban, not for ourselves, but for who? For Hashem. Hashem asks us to offer a korban on his behalf for his chet. What chet? Diminishing the moon. So like Hashem himself is sorry. And again, we're going to see that this is deeply connected to Ruvain, to the experience of rejection and abandonment and diminishment and the fixing of that, that even Hashem is going through the wounding and the fixing. Okay. Um, and so much so are we going to be talking about um, Oh, so here's just something for your own juiciness, um, right, to put into your notes. So again, we said that the moon rules the subconscious, the emotional body, right? Um, 
what do we mean by the subconscious? By the way, when Adam and Chava got separated, right? So many of our holy masters teach that Adam walked away with the conscious part of the mind. <laughs> we walked away with all the subconscious, all the shadow, right? That's a very different tikkun, the tikkun of constantly dealing with shadow, right? But the, it's also the depths, the mystery, the right? Um, uh, okay, but, but something that you might want to work on or open to this month is um, retrieving your early womb experiences. Your early womb experiences on both ends, meaning when you were in the womb. And if you are a mother, you might also want to revisit some experiences that you had when you were pregnant and how those experiences shaped and formed your children because they do. Right? We know that as early as 18 weeks, the baby is completely aware of um, sounds outside of the womb, can identify voices outside of the womb. And, and something that we, um, yeah, okay. Um, it's um, it's, it's a, a very deeply emotional influence. Um, these questions of nurturance and change, stability and instability, okay? Um, Tammuz is the time that everything begins to become very deeply heated. I mean, mm -hmm. physically heated, mm -hmm. right? So heat, literally the element of heat. Um, I'm just gonna just put this in your map because I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, I am going to unpack it, but not right now. This is just for your map, so you'll notice that we're, the, the the ruling planet of this month is the moon, and right away we're going to have an encounter with the fixing of that midrash, right? Of the diminishment of the moon, which again is the same energies of Ruvain, right? Rejection, abandonment, not knowing the question of place, right? The question of whose place in, um, on Gimel Tammuz, right? Which happens, of course, happens, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm perfectly planned to be the Rebbe's Yurtzeit or the Rebbe's transition. And, um, and right before it, or maybe part of the reason why it, it was, it is the Rebbe's portal, let's say it this way. Part of the reason seemingly why it is the Rebbe's portal is because it historically, when Yehoshua was fighting to conquer Eretz Yisrael, so let's stop right there, <laughs> just break that down. Yehoshua, we said, is always a remez to the moon, to the nukva, right? Because Moshe is the sun. Mm. Fighting to enter Eretz Yisrael, that literally means to um, take, <sighs> to enter your own home, right? When we say fighting and conquering Eretz Yisrael, we're talking about allowing light in the various cities of Eretz Yisrael, mm. your that's own. so crazy, but it's not the actual sons. Like Moshe wasn't allowed to come to Eretz Yisrael, meaning in a certain sense, it was not the mission. It's not the sun's mission to conquer the men, it's the moon's mission. It, it's the feminine's mission. Yes. That's crazy. Right? Yes. And I would add to that mm. yet, because it is his mission after the whole fixing of the nukva. Mm. Once the nukva is fixed, once the femininity, and when she goes in, then. Then Az Yashir. Then the, the sun will follow. Mm -hmm. What's the planet that goes up 
the sun. So you know what? Shocking. That's crazy. <laughs> it's also like the like with the whole with Yoshua and like having the sun and the moon. Yes. It's also kind of like the right eye and the left eye. It's exactly like there at the same time. that's exactly. And it's also the root system of our parents. Just hint, hint. Just the, the Torah is very subtle. Chodesh Av. <laughs> In case it hadn't landed yet. The father, right? Tammuz is about healing and fixing mother energy and the feminine. And Av is about fixing father energy and the sun. Very subtle. <laughs> right? So these two months are always partnered. Where does Tammuz come from? Like it's maybe Babyl uh, Babylonian. It was a god. Okay. Yeah. To be clear. Um, okay. Right. So, um, so Chate Egel, right? So, oh, sorry. I was on Gimel Tammuz, right? So Gimel Tammuz, remember the, the, the big Gimel Tammuz is when Yeshua is conquering Eretz Yisrael which means, right, clearing away klipot, clearing away the blocks, clearing away the tuma, allowing for dvekut, allowing for connection, right, within Eretz Yisrael, Eretz HaKodesh, right, and needs more time to do that, needs more light to do that, and davens to Hashem, right, that the sun and the moon should be frozen in place on that day, right, so that, in other words, that the sun shouldn't set and the moon shouldn't be diminished. And they both get held in the same way that they were originally on Gimel Tammuz, both in their fullness, both sharing space, both in the sky at the same time, both in their full power and enabling what? The conquering of, right? The clearing of the Tuma in Malhut. Eretz Yisrael is code for Malchut, right? Malchut is the feminine and Malchut is the body and Malchut is um, uh, physical reality, right? Malchut is how we become channels of Hashem's light. So beautiful, right? Remember also that he's going to have a very particular formula with Shofrot, of encircling Yericho, which is code for moon city, right? Yericho is moon city, right? Yesterday I found online, I don't even know if I should tell you guys this because I was so shocked that there was a Babylonian God named Yerach who was the God, the moon God. So you have very deep energetic, you know, the way that, that, that the light got trans transmissioned. Um, right, um, and and it was the sound vibrations of the shofar that brought the walls down. Right? There's actually well, that's very profound. We'll get there. Okay, so so we wanted to say the first thing is Gimel Tammuz, which is this Shabbos. Of course, it's the Rebbe's Yurt site, but you understand it's, when we say that we mean it's the Rebbe's portal, right? And understand that in that portal is already in place Geula. If that doesn't give you shivers, you understand? Mm -hmm. The full rectification of what we're doing of the masculine and feminine coexisting in harmony at the same time through the prayer of the feminine. Remember, Yoshua is the feminine and he dove into Hashem for right this... Um, Ness, really, right? That the two main energies should work together in their full power and harmoniously. Time should stand still so that there's a taste of the Geula imprinted on Gimel. It's making me cry. On Gimel Tammuz that was always in place, right? Mm. And is still in place. Do you understand? And that energy is going to become what we can draw upon 
to fix Yud Zayin B'Tammuz and restore it to what it was meant to be. Remember Yud Zayin B'Tammuz, Yud Zayin, let's start with that, the Gematria of 17, which is Tov, mm. Tov and light. Or and Tov are always words that are interchangeable in Torah. Why do we know? Because it says, V'yal Hashem Ta'or Ki Tov. Mm. Right? Hashem himself says, Or is Tov. Tov is all. You understand what I just said? Right? So Tammuz was supposed to be the giving of not the Luchot Rishonot, because there was no Luchot Shniot. It was supposed to be the giving of the Luchot. Right? Which is what? Testimony to what it looks like to partner on the highest levels in the fullest ways. That was the maps. Those were the imprints that we were about to receive. So let's plug us into where we are now. Okay, I think. All right, fine. Never know the order. So let's okay. So 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 let me finish this map by by almost giving the ending away and then going back and reworking it. Okay, so so no, mm -mm, not going to do that. Hold on. I just want to finish giving you the map. And if there's anything I left out of the map, and now we'll go backwards. Um, it is also maybe just put in your notes that Yud Bet and Yud Gimel Tammuz also in Chabad Chasidis, right, is also known as Chag HaGeula. Chag HaGeula, right? And again, we'll, we'll add more, you know, after. No, no, Yud Bet and Yud Gimel. Gimel Tammuz is the Rebbe's portal. Unbelievable. Okay, ready? Okay, so that's 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 a map. That was literally a hakdama. Now we're gonna go in. Okay. All right. So so here we go. <laughs> um okay. So let's just, let's just say for right now that we had the revelation of Sinai on Vav. I say that because there's a discussion of whether the first one was really Vav or Zayin, right? And the Makubali mostly hold that it, the first revelation was actually on Zayin and then every year afterwards we celebrated it on Vav. But let's just say that it was Vav, okay? So Vav Sivan, all of us here, right? Had a revelation, whether you know it or not. In other words, you might know what you received on Vav Sivan, and it might have happened, you might have received it on a uh, subconscious levels or unconscious or superconscious, probably all of them, just to be clear. <laughs> okay. So now there's 40 days between when Moshe Rabbeinu went back up, right? So morning of Zion Sivan, right? Or Again, this is the, do you understand why do we care if it was Vav or Zion? Because it has to do with how they calculated the 40 days. That's what led us to the miscalculation, you understand, of the last six hours. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. So, so he, he goes back up on the morning, let's say right now, of, um, of Zion Sivan, right? And he's, he's, he tells us he's going to be on Har Sinai for 40 days. Okay. 40 is always about gestating. It's you've received something and now it's doing stuff inside. It's growing something new in you, right? It's moving stuff. It's creating systems. It's creating a new being. It's creating new dot. That ought to be clear our connections, right? Consciousness. So this isn't history. This is Torah. It's a living Torah. So it means we are right now in a process of gestation from Shavuot morning, right? Being there in 
Abu Hav and receiving revelation, there's a 40 day process and period until Yud Zion Tammuz. That it's, it's more than conception. Conception, we might say, was Harsinai. This is gestation. So 40 is always going to give us gestation. How do we know? Well, 40 weeks of pregnancy. That is how we know. The letter Mem, right, is the gematria or the numerology of 40. And it looks like a womb. And we have two Mems. We have a regular Mem, which is the womb and at the end of the 40, it's open. So now it's ready for birth. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we have the memsophit, which is when the baby is still in the womb and it's closed and there hasn't yet been any dilation. Okay, so far so good. So what was meant to happen, just bear with me for a minute, is that we have 40 days to gestate what happened on Shavuot morning. Mm -hmm. And we're gestating that and it's changing us and it's growing something new inside of us. I'm saying we're here, this isn't history. This, mm -hmm. this is where we are today on Olive Tammuz right? We're in the middle of these 40 week process of gestating what we got on Shavuot and being with it and, and, and right. And it's, and it, the cells are dividing inside and it's creating lungs and it's creating a brain and it's, it's creating a whole new us and a whole new level of consciousness and a whole new tree of life. And each little part has its own tree of life right? Okay, that's what's happening. So what happened, so it would be interesting also to, um, if someone wants to calculate, right, we can just do it quickly. If the 17th, right, is the end of the 40 days, when does Gibbon Tammuz come out? 17, 16, 15, 14. So 40 minus 14. 26. 26. <laughs> 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 Did you guys just catch that? So Gimel Thomas is the, is the 26th, 26th day of gestation, 26th day, which is the 26th week, right? If you expound it out, right? 26th day. Of course, for those of you who didn't catch it, um, that is the gematria or the numerology of the name of Hashem, of deep compassion, um, Yud and He and Vav and He. Mm -hmm. Wow, so beautiful. Oh, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> if I can just throw one quick thing for the local ladies. Um, we went to the mikvah. We had the opportunity to go to the mikvah with Riva in the morning after learning the Lord Shavuot. And the lesson is available today after class if anybody wants to run down and jump in. Yeah, we'll say more about that later. I just don't want to forget and have anybody leave earlier than I'll get a chance to say that. So I'm done for now. I didn't understand the calculation you said from Shavuos to- So from, from Zayin Sivan, which is the morning after Shavuot, until the 17th of Tammuz, there's 40 days. The 17th? Yeah. So we were trying to figure out then if to Yud Zayin, which is the 17th of Tammuz, it's 40 days. What day would it give us till Gimel Tammuz? So it comes out the 26th day. Reba, why do we want to know Gimel Tammuz? Because it's the Rebbe's Yurt site. And it's, but more than the Rebbe's Yurt site, it's, it's what we can might say the other way, almost that it's the Rebbe's Yurt site because that's the day of, um, of Shemesh Dom Begivon, right? When the sun and the moon stopped and stood in place together. So it's the fixing of the Pagam Levana. It's the fixing of the wounding of the um, feminine and it's the rectification, it's Geulah Shlema. It's the sun and the moon's time standing still 
so that there, there's a moment frozen of the experience of Gaula, of the powers, the masculine and feminine harmonizing, not devouring each other, standing together, working together to help Yehoshua enter Eretz Yisrael. That was perfect. <laughs> oh, I love that. It was just like this grand. Ah, was that Yo-Yo Ma? Oh. oh, God, it sounded like Yo-Yo Ma, who's one of my favorite um, musicians, cellists. You understand? So it's so Gavald. And so now it's just so, uh, wow. Okay. Okay. So understand that. So th this is where we are right now. Okay. What does it mean that this is where we are right now? It means we don't have to have the 17th of Tammuz as a fast day this year. I'm not saying if it will be or it won't be. I don't know. What we're saying is the invitation stands every year for a fixing. So what was meant to happen on that day and Chazal promise us that in the future, what, that could be in 16 days, right? Mm -hmm. That in the future, um, Yudzayin B'Tamuz will be a Yom Tov for Am Yisrael because it was always meant to be a Yom Tov. It's not creating yeah. something new. It's saying it was meant to be the day of revelation of the Luchot Arishonot, but not Rishonot, Luchot. What we're talking about when we say Luchot Rishonot, it seems that we're talking about the Torah of Geula Shlema, because understand that that was the Lechat Chila Torah. That was the vision on its ideal level, right? And then it actually became the, right, it became the Torah of brokenness. And we're going to get the second Luchot on Yom Kippur. But that's a Torah that we get when we're not, when we're still broken. You understand? But what happens if we get enough healing that we elevate to being something new, to letting the gestation of the 40 days change us radically that we have such different vessels by this 17th of Tammuz that we're able to receive the Luchot. You understand? The test every year, I didn't make this up, okay? And the holy masters teach us that the opportunity of the 17th of Tammuz was to fix the chet of Adam v'chava. That's what was in place. What was being offered was, again, the same test. Listen to this, please. It's the same test. There's a new creation. Something's been gestating, right? It's just about to be birthed, right? And it's new. And now what energies come into that space? If the energies of the Egel Hazahav come in, then what comes in is the fear of not knowing, um, the uh, rushing, right? We call dochek sha'a, right? Because we're in such a vulnerable state of receptivity and lack of control and not knowing and openness because we're about to become something new that's so unfamiliar that we've never been before. And we don't know how to do that or be that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and let go of everything that we knew. It, sorry, again, it's, it's very personal. Let go of everything that we knew about ourselves and about life and about God. And, and if we can die into that for real, then we might actually be able to hold the presence of the, the, of the 
energetic qualities that the Egalaza have calls up within us, okay? Abandonment, rejection, not knowing, lack of control, emptiness, um, daddy's not here, daddy's not coming back, right? My soulmate's not here, my soulmate's not coming back. I'm saying that because Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't there and he wasn't coming back, which was our source of what we believed was going to give love, security, meaning, right? Um, right? If we can die into, I'm alone in this world. I don't know what's happening. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know where the source of love is. I don't know how I'm going to be provided for, right? Um, I don't know what this looks like. I don't, right? Now, the, the, the really positive thing that I would like to imprint us here today is this, right? We always go to the sad part of the Yudzayim Batamuz, but hear this. In the original wounding, the feminine created the first wounding. Okay, not to blame her, babla, yada, yada, all the Mephorshim say it was with deep kavana and intention for fixing. Okay, good, good. We know all of that, right? But the point was that there is about to be Shabbos, right? So let's be clear about something. It wasn't the eating of the etadat that was the issue. It was the consciousness that was the issue. It was the timing that was the issue. And that becomes the same issue with the Egel Hazahav, right? It's about what happens to us in those last six hours before we're going to become something totally new, which is what? Shabbos or the Luchot Rishonot. The last day of gestation, right before we're going to birth a new reality. When we start saying, I can't, I can't do it. It's too painful. It's, it's not familiar, right? Now, understand that in the first story, it was the nukva that made the first step into the wounding. Guess what? At the Egel HaZahav, the nukva didn't participate at all. Mm -hmm. There's already a huge healing. Mm -hmm. So it's not wrong when the Meforshim say that Yud Zayin B'Tammuz will be restored to a great day of Yom Tov, it already halfway happened, even at the first Yudzayin B'Tammuz that looks like a tragedy. You understand? Mm -hmm. And now look how deeply the Nukva didn't participate. Not only the actual females, right? The actual woman who, Hi. who didn't give... Um, their jewelry, which is a whole Torah in itself, maybe we'll be able to unpack before we get to Yadayim B'Tamuz, the Tachshitim. The tachshi just, just for your yumminess, the Tachshitim are the, the Atawot, the points of light within you, right? Your points of light, your gems in your energetic system, your gems, your Sfirot, your Nadis, call them whatever you want, okay? Right? They didn't allow the Tuma in but also the entire Shevet Levi didn't participate <laughs> with the exception of Aaron Cohen. sorry, Shh. right? Mm -hmm. But he, did, he really didn't. And Hashem really recognized that he really didn't. He really didn't participate, right? So what is Shevet Levi in the body? Shevet Levi, right? The Kohen is the right side. Yisrael is the middle. Shevet Levi, the Levim, is the entire left side. It's the Nukva. It's the feminine. You understand? You understand? The Kohen came from Levi? No, 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 no. I don't even want to go there right now. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm saying like this. The actual women didn't participate in Egel Hazahav, but also in the energetic body of all of Am Yisrael, the Kohen is the right side, Israel is the middle column, and Levi is the left. Left is always Gvura. It's always the negative charge. It's the Nukva. It's receptive. Yeah? Did you guys catch that? Say so say it again. 
Okay, again, in the collective body, it's also true in our individual body. The right is the positive charge. It's the flow, outward flow. It's chesed, it's the kohan, like Avram Avinu, okay? Avram Avinu was a kohen, to be clear. Not a kohen the way we understand kohanim in the Beit HaMikdash. He was a kohen for Hashem, okay? The middle column is the neutral charge. It's Israel, right? It's the synthesis, right? And the left side is the negative, and by negative, we mean receptive, right? The, the side that the vessel, we call that a vessel. It receives. Great, thank you. Yeah, you guys with me? So when we say that the woman didn't participate and all of Shavit Levy didn't participate, what we're saying is there was a huge tikkun on the nukva already from the eight Sada'at to Yud Zayin Can you explain what a nukva is? Nukva is the feminine. Oh, feminine waters. Feminine waters, the receptive the vessel, let's call it, right? It's not just the actual female people, which it is, but it's also how we receive, what we receive, when we receive, right? Mm -hmm. So when Chazal say that one day Yudzayin Batamuz will be a Chag, it's not so far-fetched if we understand we were already got a huge Tikkun even in that Yudzayin Batamuz, as tragic as it was, it, there was such a fixing already from the Chet of Eitzadat until then. Do you, are you understanding? Because once the feminine gets rectified, then the feminine starts to be able to help elevate the masculine. Right? You understand? And this keeps getting stronger that the feminine also didn't participate in the Chet Miraglim. Right, which is the of piece of this balancing of the masculine and the feminine. Because the feminine is getting stronger, not stronger in a fallen way, like we don't like men, we don't need men, not, not, not the fallen expression of that, the elevated expression of, of that, right? Of how to be a vessel, of how, let's say, say it again, of how to be a vessel. If we don't know how to be a vessel, then the light doesn't have any idea how to be and how to give or what to give and who to give it to. <laughs> it's such a profound teaching for women. We have to learn how to receive. Yes. So, yes. So our, right, so if you want to say that Egel HaZahav, first and foremost, what was in place for the Nukva? Boundaries. Mm -hmm. Boundaries. Number one, I am not giving my jewelry to Tuma. I am not giving my light, my jewelry, my Tashi team for the service of Tuma. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Yay! You understand the first healing that happens is, you know, the first time I tried this, um, I ate the eight sadat and then I gave it to Adam. Yeah, I think I'm going to try a different path this time, <laughs> says Riva Luna to herself after having fallen in this 973 times, right? But it's so crazy that Adam was never really taught, he was just born into this. World. None of us were ever taught. But I'm saying, but it's like, it's still not, it, when a woman falls, it's like, it's thousands of years to fix. It's like, it's so, it's, it's not a, like, an easy <laughs> no kidding. It's, like, it's like one little mess up, like we, we like wipe out the whole world. Like, I mean, we have to, we have to. Yeah. So, but also, even, wait, wait, finish that sentence. One little boundary and we begin to fix the whole world. Mm -hmm. No, we did. We, we didn't do that. We, we didn't, like, we didn't follow um, the Chet Ego, and it didn't fix that. Are you kidding? 
it's been fixing for 3,500 years. It's been changing our DNA. It's been fixing, it's been fixing. That's the lens of Hasidus, that, that what's going on and gestating in the inside until you finally have that power to say, I'm not giving my Tashi team away to Tuma, that they did it. And because they did it, every single woman in this room, when they get to, when they, this is, this is what we're talking about, the root system, our mothers and our mothers' mothers and our mothers' mothers' mothers. And every single time they made the right choice and they said no, and they were Shomer on Kedusha, it comes back to us at the right moment, at the right time, with the right opening. And we're still doing it, Pinyon Haben. We're still giving our jewelry to the Ben, Ruvain, and Ben, there's connection there. Absolutely, and we said, I think before you came on the line, maybe you were here already, remember Ben is the name of Malchut. It's the 52-lettered name of Hashem. Wait, 72, 63, 45, 52. Yes. Right? Yeah. You can, but I don't want to lose my flow. But yes, ask me. Is it? Yeah. Because I, this is, sorry. Because can you hear in his name, Ra'eb Oni becomes Ve'ahaveni, right? But who, who is going to be Ya Ahaveni? Right, okay. I want to just say strongly, what did they change? Number one, we're not giving our way our Takshi team in the service of Tuma. Uh-uh, game over. No, we're not doing that, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, I need a breath. Here. No, we didn't. We no. we didn't. They gave their own earrings. They had their own earrings. I they pulled it out of earrings. Like the... they gave their they they had earrings. Oh, and they pulled it out of their own ones. Yeah, they had. Okay, hold on. I got flooded with light. <laughs> I, I just need to take a breath. Okay. Let's go back to Gan Eden for a second. Okay. So, we're, so remember what happens, okay? We're six hours away from Shabbos, right? We're six hours away from Shabbos. And let's say, and now, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're six hours away from Moshe returning. You understand the two Whoa. stories the two wow. stories are so mirror cool. images. It's take it's chata egg um chat it's a dot take two. Is that why you wait six hours for me to know? People have always asked me that. I don't know, but it's a Gavaldic Torah. I don't know. Okay, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's this is it's a dot take two. Okay, we're six hours away from possibly entering Geula. We're six hours away from entering Shabbos. If we wait those last six hours, we will work through our fear. We will work through, you're looking at me with so much love. I'm like, wanna like run over and hug you. You're just like, your eyes are like melting. <laughs> okay, if we, and now the warning is, as Tom Petty says, the waiting is the hardest part, right? No, no Tom yeah. Petty fans. Yeah, yeah, got it. The got waiting it. is the hardest part, right? He says, right? Okay, so the last, one second. Now, how many of us, I'm sure not any of you, but how many of you have <laughs> ever heard that right before Shabbos comes in, it's possible maybe to have some shlombite issues in your house? Mm -hmm. oh, Nobody. Wow, That's what I thought. Six hour, my gosh. 
okay? It's the last six hours before you're gonna enter Shabbos consciousness, fill in the blank. The last six hours before receiving the Luchot, the last six hours before Geula, the last six hours before birth, right? And by hours, we don't mean hours. We mean, do you know what we mean by the last six hours? Fixing the Vav, fixing the Midos, fixing the six days of creation, fixing physical reality, fixing the Vav. That's what we mean by the last six hours, right? By the way, P.S. Fixing the masculine. Right, that's the vav. Fixing the heart. That's the vav. It's all the same thing. Tif eret, right? Za, zer anpin, the midos. It's all the same thing. The six days of creation, physical reality. Okay? Wait, wait, sorry. Because I'm going to lose my flow. I'm so sorry. Right? Um, Sorry. Okay, so so last six hours. Okay, so last so the last six hours, right? You understand? We made it forty days minus six hours. There was never an egel hazahav. There was we don't have any records of fighting. Datan and even Datan and Aviram got it together, right? Datan and Aviram, the, the, the troublemakers in the Midbao, okay? Even they were quiet. We don't hear anything. It's the last six hours. Yes, yes. It's always because, because, and, and it's actually because everything is coming up to get healed. A year and a half before they right. It's always like we're wait, sorry, sorry, please let's not go there. It's beautiful, but it's sorry, I might have to my brain is getting uh last six hours. Okay. So the last six hours, um what happened? Okay. So now one thing we want to talk about. Okay, so let's let's do the gone eight inside, right? So the gone eight inside is the last six hours was about not about if we ate or didn't eat. It was about our consciousness. What with what intention do we eat? Right? So it's about how we receive oneg, our relationship with pleasure. Mm -hmm. Because Hashem just wants to give us pleasure. But are we grabbing pleasure because from a place of fear, which gives birth to what? Disconnection, shame, blame. It's not me, it's her. It's not her, it's him. It's not, right? Right? Because we're so empty, we're so hungry, we're starving. It's the last six hours, right? And we're so young and we're so, right? And it's like, ah, I just can't anymore, Hashem. Like, I can't handle a lack of disconnection. I can't handle duality. I can't handle feeling empty. I can't handle the empty space. I can't, right? Okay, so hold that, holding that thought for a second. Now we go back to Egel Hazahav, right? Now understand, this is so profound. So all of Chazal say, that the satan, right? What is the satan? That's our own negative mind. Mm -hmm. See in across the sky a vision. What's the vision? Moshe's dead, right? Mm -hmm. Moshe's dead. Now plug that into yourself. It means a projection being projected in your this, the heavens. What's the heavens? Your mind, right? This is the earth. This is the heavens a projection being swished across your mind, right? Moshe's dead. What does that mean? There's no tzaddik. There's no spiritual master. There's no soulmate. There's no mommy and daddy. Nothing's coming to save you or rescue you, right? There's no plan. 
You have no idea why you're here in this need valve, right? This testing ground of growing consciousness, which we might call the world, <laughs> right? With seemingly no leader, no goodness, right? No water, no food, no shelter, right? Now also realize that the man was given in the sort of Moshe Rabbeinu. They knew that. So, oh, whoopsie, there's not going to be any food either. Right? Now, do you understand that the feminine made a different choice? Because Chazal teach us that the eights hadaat actually only happened on the level of the mind, that it never happened in physical reality. No. That the whole story was taking place on the level of the mind. <laughs> remember, Shivim Panim, okay? Shivim Panim. But remember, we talked about the discussion between Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Eliezer. When was the world created, right? Was it in Nisan or was it in um, Tishrei? And they resolve that, right, by saying the physical world was created in Nisan, but pre creation happened in Tishrei on the level of the mind, right? We created a whole world and universes. We do that, right? Anyone of you ever created a world in your mind? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What, what? Yeah. So, yes, but they're talking about when was human beings created, really? But yes, the 25th of Elul or the 25th of Adar, but we don't celebrate the 25th of Elul. We celebrate Rosh Hashanah, all of Tishrei, because that was the creation of human being. That, did, yeah, was that clear? Should I say it again? The world was, was the world created Kaf Hei Elul or Kaf Hei um, Adar, right? But we don't celebrate Rosh Hashanah as Kaf Hei Elul. We celebrate Rosh Hashanah as all of Tishrei because that's the day that Adam and Chava were created that human beings were created. It was the sixth day of creation. Yeah, was that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was in this one. Right, because, so Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua are having a discussion because we celebrate Nisan as the first month in the Torah. How could it be the first month? That's the discussion between them. How could, why is that the first month? Don't worry about it. Really, don't worry about it. Different discussion. Um, the sixth hour. Yeah. So what, by the way, there's another, I've seen another Torah given this, giving this over as three hours, just so you know, if you're ever doing research. To me, it, it makes more sense that it's six, but I have also seen it as the last three hours, just to give it over. That's just weird with what she said, because people either hold six hours for not e eating milk afternoon, or they hold three hours for not eating That's milk. really a good problem. Okay, one Oops. second. Um, yeah, guys. Okay, all right. Let's, let's not go there. Let's not get distracted. So you understand that this time, the feminine also saw that vision of Moshe's dead, right? And, and, and the difference became, now what? Mm -hmm. Now what? So that that becomes the moment of truth. They're having the same experience. Moshe's dead. We're women alone here. No way. We're, the women say, now what? And the letters. Are no, we're saying there's a deep receiving of this is reality. Yeah. Right? The woman, were, like, it wasn't this kind of superimposed Amuna, like, no, that vision isn't true. No. Right? There was a, an acceptance of this is the reality. This is right. This is really happening. And still, can we react differently? Can we respond in a new way? Right? This, why do we care? Because these are our feminine maps. 
So we learned, first of all, we didn't give away our Tarshitim to in service of Tuma. So we had borders. We said, no, we will not be in service of that. We will not give our life force away cheaply and in, in dishonored ways. Right? And then there's also a, a response. By the way, because she's on the line, I just have to say that so much of this Torah was birthed yesterday uh, from deep, deep um, discussions uh, with Ora Simcha. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's definitely been a big midwife um, for these Torahs coming into the world. So thank you. Thank you, Orson. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. And um, so, what does the feminine do? Because this is these are our maps, right? I gotta find a page because after our conversation, I actually put stuff down. And I wanted to. I know. Okay. Can we say? Can we see if we can? Five minutes for real? No, it wouldn't. Six minutes. Oh, Vav, can we do it in six minutes? I know. I know. I, we, we could also stop because I, speaking of like honoring and borders. Um, so this, this came from Ora Simcha. Um, the, the feminine begins to ask the question, right? Um, is this honoring me? Is this honoring me? Because I was saying, I've been so trained to ask different questions. Does this help the other person? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And does this help them with their wounds and their stories and their fixing? Right? But to begin with, I'm the vessel. If my vessel isn't strong and my vessel isn't safe, I cannot help the masculine. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't know that. No one ever taught me that. I was taught as a little girl to be in service to anybody and everybody awesome. all the time, but I wanted to, but nobody told me there's a Seder Hishtal Shalus and the Seder Hishtal Shalus is first, your own vessel has to be taken care of and strong and protected and safe and honored, right? There's a Seder. So that obviously the same way I didn't know it, Chava didn't know it because I'm just one of her daughters. Right? So we're learning and we're learning. Oh, seriously, we're going to. We, we literally didn't even begin to touch on what, what does any of this have to do with Ruvain? Okay, give me five minutes. I'm going to go as fast as I can. Uh, so please hold your questions and ask me after because I'm going to try to do this in five minutes. So the Torah for the feminine is that I need kavod. That's what makes me a vessel. I need to be honored. I need to honor myself first and foremost, because that actually honors the Shrina dwelling within me. And if I do not honor the Shrina dwelling within me, I certainly cannot expect that the Dukva is going to honor the Shrina in me. Okay, so Ora Simcha taught me this. And you begin by asking the right question. Does this honor me? Does this honor the Shrina in me? I need to help elevate Shrina in the world. It begins with the Shrina in me. I love that. I honor the Shrina by asking that question and holding her borders. So beautiful. I lift her from the dust when I ask that question and to understand that maybe the masculine Torah is to go into Bittal as they're fixing, to run from Kavod, to avoid Kavod, to avoid elevation and puffing out of self mm. and what we call Yeshut. And the direction of their healing by and large is to go into Bittal. That is not the direction of our healing. And we have been receiving, I've been receiving Torah from men my whole life. And they're giving me the formula of how to fix a man. So, and I took that 
become less, become less, become less, give more, give more, give more, that that's actually a masculine Torah. Such a hallelujah moment, right? Literally, like such a hallelujah moment. That is not the fixing. That's not the direction for the nukva. The the nukva is have borders, learn how to become a vessel. A vessel means there's a safe space. A vessel means an irmi clap. A vessel means there's discernment, what comes into that vessel and what doesn't come into that vessel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once you become that safe, strong vessel, you can hold light. Mm -hmm. And you can help the light, which is the man, and it's also Hashem, it's all of it, right? Mm -hmm. To elevate. But you cannot do that if your own vessel is being violated, cracked, smushed, filled with tar and yuckiness, right? Okay, I didn't know this. No one ever taught us these Torahs. This is the Torah of the moon month, of the feminine, of it's all encoded in Ruvain, but we don't have time. So I need one minute just to finish this piece, right? So the, 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 the fixing of the feminine is to move into yeshut, not into bittal, into becoming, into being, not dissolving being. That's bittal. It's, 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 yeah, it's not bittal, but it is surrender. Wait, I want to say something, right? No Torah is rigidity. We're not talking about getting locked into a polarity of we only ever do this and we never, ever do that. Mm-hmm. Always we're talking about flow and the spectrum, right? But, and but, but we want to keep that in mind. And we want to keep in mind the Seder Hishtalshalus. There are times when we move into Bittal, but in what order? In what order? You can't Bittal until you have a strong Kli first, a healthy Kli, a safe Kli. Right? And that Kli is actually supposed to be for receiving true pleasure. Oneg Shabbos. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I just don't even, I don't even know how to. So understand what I'm going through. <laughs> um, maybe, again, people have been um, saying to me that they're. They're not on Zoom, and they're or they're less on Zoom, and they're or less interested in Zoom. Um, but we're we can finish right now, but we're not done because we literally didn't do the entire journey of Ruvain and how this has to do with anything that we've just been talking about. So we'll leave that for now. Um, just give me one one second because I'm going to finish this. I'm just going to wrap this. Um, yeah, I heard you. Thank you so much. I t- deeply heard, but I want to really honor Nicole's space. So I want to just wrap this class um, um, and just say this. Um, what their response was, was to move into total feminine energy. So we said it begins with discernment and borders. Good. They did that. But then, and this is similar similar to what Nicole was saying, then it moves into deep humility, deep, deep patience, mm-hmm. right? The hamtana, deep surrender into the not knowing. This is exactly how we give birth, isn't it? It's exactly what women do in order to have a peaceful birth. Don't push lowly chokit sha'a. Don't push the baby out and don't push for the result or the knowing in any situation, right? Because you can what? You can tear, right? Well, you can make a hole in your vessel. Breathe, right? Coming with the, uh, remember the last six hours was about before we were about to enter into Shabbos. I'm done. I'm literally done. I'm going to give myself literally one minute. What is Shabbos? We said it's about shalom, wholeness, integration, peace. It's about oneg, pleasure. It's about zivug and true connection. It's about 
knowing how to receive, right? It's about surrendering the, the vav, the six days of the week and all the doing and all the needing to know and all the forcing. The masculine response at the Ekel Hasahav, it shares exactly the qualities of Ruvain when he's in his unrectified before he gets fixed. Impulsivity, forcing an issue, right? Acting from the place of rejection, abandonment, and the empty space, grabbing. This is what Yaakov saw in him around the time of the bracha that needed fixing. The understanding how the two are fitting together, because I couldn't go into the whole thing yet. And here's the last line, and that is this. He lost his bechor. The three things that Reuven lost. He was supposed to be the bechor of the double portion that went to Yosef. He was supposed to be the bechor of the kohanim that went to Levi. He was supposed to be the Bechor of um, Malchut, and that went to Yehuda, of kings, and that went to Yehuda. It seemed that he lost all three Bechors, but Chazal come and tell us, forever and ever, he became the first person in the whole world ever to do tshuva me'ahava, tshuva ila'a, to want connection with Hashem more than the stuff. Okay. His reward was connection to Hashem and creating the energy pathway of tshuva ila'a, tshuva me'ahava. And he forever, and he gets a real bechora, a, a real bechora. There's so much more we can say, but we just can't say it right now. And he ends up doing the fixing, um, the fixing of, um, I'm sorry, we have to stop. The fixing of Asav. Their paths also are total mirrored in the Bechorot, selling their Bechorah, giving away their Bechorah, losing their Bechorah, both from places of impulsivity and grab grabbing and impatience and fear Right. Wow. And yet in the end, what he does with all of that is he also elevates Asav by by reclaiming the Bahura of of deep of becoming the first person to do chuva me ahava, which means to value Dvekus, right? And um and patience and um and and um receiving and waiting and not knowing and going softer and softer once you have your borders, right? Um, okay, somebody, please, anybody take any piece that you received and, um, and turn it into a, a bracha, a chanda for yourself and for all of us. Give a bracha that, that we should be able to see before we're being cracked and that we should be able to stop it and bring in the light to heal the places that would be cracked. Amen. Wow. Amen. Okay, anybody on Zoom want to give a quick? Can I ask just, so is it when you're in a place of fear and panic, that the women had a muna. It's really like that you realize Hashem hasn't abandoned you, and that's why you're able. I deliberately to hold on. use that lashon for a reason because I think it's more useful to say practically what that means to have a muna is to wait, to, to be okay with the not knowing. It's very feminine, right? To not force an agenda, to not force a solution, to not force a plan, to not give up in despair and start grabbing anything impulsively just to quiet the pain and the emptiness and the lack, right? Which we might call that addiction, um, right? It's a very addicted kind of response that I can't, it's to sit in with the empty space 
It's to sit with the pain. It's to sit with the contractions and to breathe and to not know and, and, to, um, and to keep turning towards instead of away from. Remember in the Eight Sadat, they turned away from Hashem and they turned away from each other. So I didn't want to use the word Muna because I, I, it, it can feel like something again that I'm supposed to feel, but what if I don't? Right. So what, what almost like what action and here it's non-action, right? Do I, do I take? But, but the, oh, the thing that gives you the ability to do that is the deep understanding that there's a point that Hashem is behind this, that if I just wait, it'll be okay because this is going somewhere. Hashem is behind it all. But speaking of the feminine, um, I need to honor our hostess. Okay, go Thank for you, it. everybody. You're welcome to contact me privately and we can talk and you can ask questions by phone or you can email me, but um, we need to practice our holy borders and vessels. Um, and thank you, everybody. I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording.